The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Thursday morning, 60 minutes to go until that opening bell. And folks, we got markets in positive territory. Why not? We'll kick it off. S&Ps right now positive by about eight points, trading at 32.74. We're about 10 points off of where we were on the highs overnight, though, 32.84 in the S&Ps. NASDAQ futures up 73 points, trading at 10,877. Dow up 80 points, trading at 26,960. And you get the Russell right now flat at 1489 oil negative 19 cents at 4171 quite a day for oil yesterday charging higher charging into highs at about 5 a.m of 4236 we've backed off a bit from that price level jumping over to gold quite the acceleration you have gold hitting 1887.90 overnight we're about $10 off that level, still positive by $12 on the session at $18.77. Silver backing off a bit off $0.25 cents at $22.88. And we're looking at the note and bond market, folks. Guess what? Higher price, lower yield. The 10-year up two ticks, 139.20. The 30-year up six ticks at 180.26. So we're going to jump around to a couple headlines, starting things off. Weekly jobless claims, 1.416 million is the number. That number just coming out at 8.30 a.m., basically 100 seconds ago, two minutes ago. Uh, weekly jobless claims, always Thursdays at 8.30. So these are initial jobless claims. These are, these are people who are initially, in the last week, for the first time, filing for an initial claim of 1.416 million people. The number they were looking for was 1.3. Uh, 18th straight week of initial claims rising by more than a million. So that hit the market right at 8.30. What you also had out here is Mnuchin. So you have a couple stories. I'm going to jump around a bit. So here's the first story I was going to mention. It's pretty tough when you first have to get a deal between the Republican president and the Republican Senate, and then you have to get a deal between the Republican Senate and the Democratic House, which has to be approved by the Republican president. And so the first hurdle, it seemed last night, was getting the Republican president, Trump, on board with the Republican Senate, McConnell. Uh, they seem to have a deal in there. Of course, that was talking about payroll taxes, the amount that they're going to go for. It seems to be about a trillion dollars. And then you have this morning coming out saying Mnuchin talking about the GOP, GOP plan for unemployment extension will be based on, quote unquote, 70 percent wage replacement. So this just hit the tape in like the last 15 minutes. Uh, there were a bunch of different ideas thrown out yesterday, right? As of Wednesday, so it's the much talked about $600 per week is the unemployment benefit in the CARES Act. This is the last week of that going on. If that expires, you're just back to state unemployment benefits in many states, Florida, one of them, uh, very low levels, nothing near the wage replacement in terms of being near what you would have making in a job. Doesn't mean the government should be providing that, but it's a steep, steep drop off. As of yesterday, the idea thrown around was from $600 a week to $100 a week additional through the rest of the year. That would be quite a drop off for those relying on unemployment benefits, out of work. Now it seems like the idea being thrown around is 70% wage replacement for an unemployment benefit. That just hit in the tape. We're gonna see a lot of reactions in the market, folks. We get the S&Ps, we're up about four points now, pulling back a bit on the whether it's a weekly jobless claims number hitting right at 830, exceeding, look at this runoff. We just traded from 3275, we're now trading 3269, putting this on a little 15 minute to see for the week. We had quite a strong acceleration. I mean, even yesterday, right? These lows in the S&P yesterday, we traded up 50 points from where we were at 5 in the morning, 32.27, up to 32.84 at about 3 in the morning overnight. All right, we got to jump around to some of the companies with earnings. Last night, we had two big ones, Tesla knocking it out of the park. They trade up to 17.16. Excuse me, we're still up about $70, trading at $16.60 this morning for Tesla. And before we jump into the actual numbers, you had Microsoft out there as well. And I was saying last night, 
thinking to myself, I wasn't saying, I was thinking to myself when these numbers came out, I said, man, no matter what happens to the NASDAQ, these tech stocks just always rebound. I wonder what the action is going to be like overnight because I imagine as I'm looking at this stock, and it was settling at about 207 last night, give or take. Uh, Say, so I, I, I feel like this thing's going to be up, whether it's overnight or by the end of the day today. Uh, but the market's pulling back a bit. Microsoft holding up well, though. Uh, let's get into these two numbers for the Giants. So Microsoft first. And that's what strong numbers when you look at the world we're dealing with right now, right? Cloud, cloud could be everything for some of these companies in the future. The, the amount of margins you can make on cloud revenue. Microsoft's Azure Cloud slowed to 47% in terms of growth from 59% the previous quarter. So they still grow at 47, grow, yeah, grow at 47%. Uh, Microsoft's revenue growth forecast, lighter than expected for the current quarter. Market never likes to hear that. Getting into the numbers though, they made $1.46 a share. The market was only looking for $1.34. How about taking in a billion and a half extra dollars than the market was looking for in 90 days. They take in 38.03. The market was looking for 36.5. Overall revenue grew 13% on an annualized basis in the quarter. Folks, last year, Microsoft was taking in a lot of money. This year, they're taking in 13% more money than they took in last year. Uh, revenue went up 15% in the prior quarter, which saw less impact on the coronavirus pandemic. Nonetheless, Microsoft paid the penalty overnight. When you're looking at uh, where they were, capital expenditures 5.8, uh, lots of numbers in there. Nonetheless, they are lower, but charging back. Tesla, so Tesla out with their numbers, they're talking about a lot of things, quite a profit for them. I think we get the numbers down here, do we? No, this is just talking about, all right, we'll pull up Tesla earnings, but they made more than $2 a share the estimate was for barely a profit. The key factor there, four consecutive quarters of profitability, that puts them eligible for the S&P 500. And as you can see, they crushed it out of the park. They made $2 a share. The estimate was for basically pennies a share in profit. And you had Tesla spike to 17.16, we're at 16.56. S&P is right now positive by three. Twitter also out with their numbers this morning quite the pop as they saw quite the growth in daily monetizable active users. Let's get into the Twitter. Where are we on Twitter? Here we are. There's a lot of lot of earnings folks today. And after the bell today, we get Amazon and Intel. How about that one? Uh, Twitter reports strong user growth, ad revenue is down. So they got a lot more people on the, the platform, but they got a lot less advertisers paying money to market to those people. Loss per share, $1.39, weighed down by a $1.1 billion loss related to non-cash deferred tax asset. Revenue, $683 million. They were looking for more than $700. Now, the, the big highlight here, though, which probably is what has the market charging higher, $186 million monetizable daily active users. They were only looking for $172. And uh, check out this growth. Daily users defined by monetizable by Twitter. Quite the pop here when you look at the U.S. international growth across the board. We're now approaching, uh, what are we at? What was the number that they're at? 186. And uh, quite the pop there. So Twitter shares this morning trading higher from 36.94 to 39.09. All these stocks, though, not even close to the expected move. I think Twitter was looking for almost three dollars, right? You're at about two dollars. Microsoft was pricing in about nine dollars in movement. You're less than four dollars away. And Tesla was pricing in two hundred dollars in movement, and you're only about seventy dollars away. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A Share Bull and Bear ETFs. China A Shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction Shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction Shares at 866 476 7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P's right now holding on to those gains up five points. We got the NASDAQ futures up 69 points, the Dow positive by 26, jumping around to some of the other companies with earnings action this morning. And we got a lot of them, folks. We will kick it off. So Chipotle, actually last night after the bell, I believe, right? Let's check that out. CMG. Yeah, there you go. Last night after the bell, you spike to 1191. We're currently trading at 1164, down from 1185. Strong numbers. I mean, digital sales triple in the second quarter, but can't offset dining room closures. So Chipotle's digital sales soared 216% during the second quarter as more customers ordered their burritos online. It's always tough using percentages off of small numbers, folks. You know, digital sales soared 216%. What were you doing? last year because you better have knocked it out of the park when everybody stopped eating in your dining stores and started doing business online. Companies net sales fell almost 5% from the year earlier period. There you go. Even with that type of digital sales growth, can't replace the amount of action that they had going on in their dining rooms. Chipotle recently pledged to hire 10,000 new workers as digital orders drive sales growth. Futures coming, folks. Earnings, 40 cents a share, not bad versus 35 cents. Revenue, 1.36 billion versus 1.34. Also not bad considering what they were dealing with there. Chipotle, though, as you can see, lower a little bit on that action. All right, Southwest. American, United, we'll start it off. Southwest post $915 million loss. Here's the key, and it, it makes sense fundamentally, folks. Travel demand will remain weak without a coronavirus vaccine. International travel, not even close. Southwest, they're pretty domestic. Whoops, LUV is their symbol. You see the action a little bit lower, 3306 from 3330. Uh, can't imagine how we come out of this in terms of the airlines being anywhere near where they were while this coronavirus is raging in almost any capacity. Yes, you can travel, um, but what are you traveling for? Are you traveling for a wedding? Because I have a wedding that was potentially, I have a wedding that was supposed to take place in April in Boston. Uh, that, of course, canceled. Postponed originally to September. Possible that that could happen as a resident of Florida, Florida right now, where things are raging. If I went there, there's a possibility. I mean, in New York right now, I know I'd have to quarantine for 14 days. Not sure what the policy is in Boston. I don't know if I'd feel comfortable just driving up or flying up from Florida with COVID raging and going to that wedding. Uh, 
you're just going to see travel dramatically cut until this is done. So all these airlines, nonetheless, Southwest really putting it out there, though. 3306, American, uh, with their numbers pretty much flat from 3336 to 1141. Uh, what else we got? United. United, okay, so they had theirs two days ago, yeah. 3180 is what they're trading at from 3167. American, they posted a $2.1 billion loss. We just pulled up their chart, pretty close to even action right now. Dow, Dow out with their numbers. Quarterly loss, coronavirus hit, plans to cut workforce by 6%. Dow Inc., D-O-W, I believe it's their symbol. Yep, there's their earnings from 4434. We're trading pretty much a little bit lower at 4350 right now on Dow. Whoops. All right, so Morgan Stanley getting into coronavirus. We'll jump to more equities because we got a lot of earnings even this morning as well. Uh, quite a statement out here from Morgan Stanley going on. Cases could reach 150,000 day a day by the fall. I mean, folks, we're about to hit August. The fall ain't that far away. Uh, Morgan Stanley analyst says, so biotechnology analyst Matthew Harrison, he's talking about 150,000 new cases unless we get it together, folks. Um, previously, the second wave in the fall, they were looking for only 40 to 50,000. Things have accelerated. Um, the one good thing, I'll pull up Florida numbers right now. Let me just find this. I have it, I think. Okay, so these were the numbers yesterday. Uh, where it's going to be tough to see these. Perfect. Let me zoom them in. Okay. These were the numbers yesterday. Here we go. Perfect. So... No, these numbers yesterday? Yes, so these are the numbers released yesterday. They were released on the 22nd of July, and they are current as of the previous day, right? The 21st of July. So a couple things to go over here. Number one, you're still dealing with almost 10,000 cases a day, 97.52 for the day. Decent testing numbers. It's not like testing numbers are, are spiking, folks. It seems like they are testing. There is a backlog at some areas, but Couple in, one encouraging thing here you have to look to. I mean, we can't be excited about 11% going forward for positivity rates, but that is the first time that we are dealing with an under 11% positivity rate in Florida for at least the last couple weeks. Now, not encouraging is that the average age continues to rise from 30s, 34 was the original median age we're talking about. We're now at 42 for the median age. Uh, not what you want to see, but hopefully this trend continues here in Florida. We're under 11 percent. We're as high as 18.53, I think. That's going back about two weeks ago on July 8th. Uh, these numbers are what you want to pay attention to down here. They're first-time tests. When people are getting tested multiple times, okay? Florida Department of Health breaks this out, folks, all right? You hear a lot of arguments saying, ah, people get tested. They get tested every single day when they're positive and they drive up the results. Uh, yes, they do, okay? But Florida Department of Health breaks it out, first-time tests. There's your number. No distortion, 10.55%, first-time People are being tested, not counting people who are tested multiple times. All right, excluding people who have been previously tested positive. So when you hear people talk about the numbers are being distorted, because if you're positive, they test you every single day, tell those people that the Florida Department of Health puts out numbers that exclude people who have been previously tested positive so that you can accurately tell the number positive. There you go. All right, folks, today, what do we have going on? Our man, Basil Chapman. He's going to be live with subscribers for the opening call, 4 till 5.30, 90-minute webinar. Will the same chart formations unfold for the second half of 2020, or must we find new patterns? Basil, check out the opening call, folks. You can sign up. You get a 30-day money-back guarantee. You head on over here. What he's going to be talking about? How he's used time and price relationships, talking about for the first half of 2020, the cup and V-shaped pattern worked on the way up. Will we have to look for inverse patterns soon? Will the high-tech sector take a breather, allowing other sectors to rally? What clues would suggest an infrastructure play is possible and attempting a longer-term outlook? This webinar will be archived, folks. 90 minutes in there with Basil. When you sign up, you also gain access to all of his archived webinars. He's got a good five or six of them in there. Check it out on the front page of TFNN. Basil will be in there tonight after Tom's program at 4 o'clock. And also while you're over there, check out my new report. Rocket Equities and Options Report newsletter, weekly newsletter, going out every Monday. 
Daily updates usually going on at least these couple weeks as I build a long-term portfolio. We're looking at some swing trades. We haven't really gotten into it too much yet in the short-term sector. We got one trade out there for the long-term sector. Um, and I'm not in a rush. You know, I want to make sure this first month we get some good action. But this is a volatile market. We're going to build a portfolio of long-term stocks, looking at stocks with real potential, real value in the long term in this market, along with some swing trades, some option trades. So check it out. 30-day money-back guarantee, and you're able to lock in 48.50, which is 50% off the $97 price. Just enter that promo code ROCKET, and that expires at the end of this month. Uh, so check them both out. Sign up for Basil. Sign up for mine as well. Check them out. If you don't like them, always 30-day money-back guarantee. All right, let's check back in on the markets. These markets, they're breaking off a bit. Uh, right now, 32.66. Look at this S&P. Since 8.30, when we started the program, we were up at 32.75. We've given back about 10 points. And we're now basically where we were overnight. And you see the pop we had at about 2 in the morning from 32.67 up to 32.84. And we just gave it all back, 32.66. Dow negative by 10. S&P is positive by 1. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us, and Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that will take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the Newsletter tab. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information.
Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps clinging on to green positive territory by less than a point right now. We might squeak into negative territory by 9 o'clock, and there we go. We're flat. You get the Dow right now negative by 15, NASDAQ positive by 46, and there it is, S&P negative by one quarter of a point. Checking out that acceleration, folks. That weekly jobless claims hitting the tape at about 8.30 this morning, and the market pulling back a bit. We've given back about 10 S&P points on that price level since that number hit at 8.30. All right, jumping around to other equities with action so far this morning. So, I mean, these the, it just keeps flowing, folks. There's so much, too much to cover right now. Boeing supplier braces for significantly fewer max deliveries through 2022. Let's just see how Boeing's reacting as you have the Dow off 14 points. A little bit of a pullback, maybe off that news from 180.40 to 179.22. Market's pulling back at the same time as well, though. All right, we're going to jump around to some companies with earnings. We have AT&T out with their numbers. Blackstone, Polte beat Polte, the home builder, est beat estimates by 28 cents a share. Quarterly earnings of a buck 15. They're higher this morning. Blackstone, earnings per share of 43 cents, with the value of private equity portfolio jumping 12.8 percent in the quarter. So AT&T, strong numbers, up to 30. 52 from 3016. BX, Blackstone, higher as well to 5860. Pulte, PHM, check out this pop on them, up to 4128 from 3944 yesterday. We covered the airlines, we covered Dow, yeah, Auto Nation trading higher. So the auto dealer earned adjusted 141 a share, well above the 37 cents. Revenue also above, above forecast as well. There's your action on Auto Nation from 48.85 to 55. We're trading back at 52.55 right now. We covered Tesla, Las Vegas Sands, lost $1.05 for the second quarter, wider than the 74 cents the market was looking for. Some of these casino stocks, right, already pretty much pummeled from 46.84. We're going to open a little bit lower after their earnings last night to 46.29. All right, folks, stay tuned. We got our man Larry Pesavento. He's coming up live next with Trade What You See. Should be an interesting day in the market. We got weekly jobless claims, and we got Amazon and Intel earnings after the bell. Microsoft and Tesla, they're going to open up on their earnings. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Presidento coming up live next.